Good afternoon. Uh, just uh, after having a chance to watch watch the film and and uh, evaluate uh, the game from Saturday, um, continue to be disappointed in the outcome, uh, but encouraged by um, the progress overall. Uh, you go through and evaluate how your team performs in that setting. We knew going in it would be a tough environment to play in, and uh, with still a lot of young guys that situation, especially in lieu of uh, losing Coy and then having to play Matt Bedford. Um, ended up starting Matt and uh, he played every snap, which we really weren't going into it. 100% sure that he would be able to handle that type of workload in that environment for the first time ever, um, but he did uh, He did a great job. He made mistakes for sure, but uh, did a great job. I'm really proud of him and how he responded. Same with Mike Penix, you know, first Really true road game for him, and and uh, in conference play, absolutely the first one, and uh, just really uh, encouraged by the way he handled the moment. And it wasn't too big for him. He was very poised and very um, effective in, in what he was able to do. And uh, for that, he was, you know, as you know, named Big Ten Freshman of the Week for the second time in three of his games. You know, so. But as a collective effort, that was, that was the offensive coaching staff game plan. That was the execution of it, the receivers, the way they performed, and as well as the way they blocked um, for each other. The effort up front. You know, I mentioned Stevie Scott. We had a great team meeting this morning. I just uh, got after our guys. Uh, it was very hard on them in some areas um, in the accountability. Like as I told our team today, the the film creates accountability because everything that happens on game day shows up on film. The film never lies. And uh, uh, it creates accountability for coaches. Uh, it creates accountability for me, uh, for the foremost and, and utmost, but, and for the players, you know, and how they perform. And so, and so sometimes those are, those are hard meetings to have and, and you get after them hard, but you also realize um, you, you see what we're building, you see the progress, you see what we're becoming, and uh, and the work that's in front of us, and the opportunity in front of us. And so, but that collective group offensively just did a great job of helping Michael Penix uh, have the game that he had. Um, you know, I mentioned Stevie Scott. You know, he uh, his effort on pass pro was phenomenal. Uh, that's a collective buy-in that you see. That's a guy understanding LEO and understanding that it's not about him. And, He's not caring who gets the credit. And guys that, that just care about their stats, and, and uh, that's a guy that just cares who gets the credit. And he's not that way, you know. And uh, ran, ran hard, did some great things. Ronnie Walker is the epitome of that, and just doing his job 100%. And I could go on and on. You know, even Westbrook, the way he blocked, made some good catches. You know, um, D. Hale, some big catches, but the way he blocked. Peyton Henderson didn't have a bunch of catches, but man, he blocked his tail off, you know, and was physical. And so, you know, obviously, WAP. Played to a certain level, but you know he was crushed at the end of the game. You know, he had a great game and had stats and all that stuff, but you know, he was so emotional afterwards. Cause he just wants to win. His team wants to win. So, and that's where you know you go to the other side of the football and did some good things, but did were not good enough. You know, critical times, situational football, um, did not uh, come up with the plays we needed to come up with, and, and have to communicate better, have to do a better job defensively. Uh, without question, into the half end of the game is not acceptable with how we have to how we want to finish and how we will finish uh, those situations and, and special teams mistakes, the the, the penalties that, that cost us. And I, I said it a week ago that they would cost us against in conference play, could cost us a game in conference play, and those those were definitely very very game changing plays that you put yourself in. And so as we elevate our level of play and, and move into conference opponents. You know, those the margin for error becomes smaller and smaller in those areas, and so to me, that's a really a huge part of us growing as a team and, and using these next three practices here of this bye week of focusing on those details and, and improving ourselves and becoming a better football team. But I uh, also felt like that there's a, there's enough there, and there's a there's a look in this team's eye that uh, that I know where we're going, and uh, I believe in these guys, and so I'm just really um, excited to get back to work with them tomorrow. Had a great day today. Meetings did not practice. Uh, had a great lift. The guys are continue to work extremely hard in the weight room. Um, I have three goals for for uh, the bye week. Number one, to create a mental and physical break for our guys from the the grind of the season. You, know, you go through fall camp, which is a full month of that, and you go right into the first five games. 
and just the, the mental break that you need. So not going to have near as much meeting time, not going to be a lot of skiing. Um, and we are going to work. And when we work, we'll be full bore, short practice will be a little shorter. Um, but uh, but just a physical break as well. We've got to get some guys rested. And the goal number two is to, to get all the injured guys healthy. And so we maximize our rehab this week and, and be able to go into Rutgers um, healthy as, as much as possible. And uh, that's goal two. And goal number three is to improve fundamentally and technically as a football team in all three phases. So that's our goals for these next uh, several days. And we'll be going, we'll be practicing Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And then uh, coaches will be out recruiting on Thursday uh, afternoon and all day Friday. And then I'll be going out myself. So a uh, big, big recruiting weekend for us and great opportunity for us to um, take uh, these first five games and be able to uh, move forward and look to a very important four game stretch before our next bye week. So I'm um, excited about what's ahead of us and what our guys are uh, hard to work and how hard we played um, and how much they're learning to, to come together. Questions? Zach? I know so this is just kind of natural to the quarterback position, but how encouraged were you maybe not just by Michael's performance, but by the way it felt like the offense kind of followed him, was sparked by him that, that for a redshirt freshman making his first Big Ten start after a three-week layoff, he still kind of had that, that impact upon him. There's no question, and uh, you know we, we talked about um, you know, John Wooden has he coined the phrase that you know the competitive greatness that you have to have um, to play at a high level of any sport, and and with that is it's you're at your best when your best is demanded, and um, and the second phase of that is that you make those around you better, and and part of that making them better is a confidence that you exude to them. And, and, and the poise that you have, the demeanor that you have, the playmaking ability that you have that creates, you know, um, that confidence and expectation for that. And I just think some guys have that naturally, you know, and um, you can't, you know, it's hard to manufacture those kinds of things. And I just think it, it was. I mean, you go through and you think about the situation that, that Michael found himself in, as you, you mentioned, it's, a, it's his first conference road game. You know, first conference start, you know, um, still young, hasn't played a lot of football, um, has not practiced a lot the last several weeks, uh, full practice. And so um, didn't even have a full week of practice, you know, getting all those details before that, but did not practice every single day fully. Um, just trying to, to get his, his body ready. And so all those things combined, you know, it's really, um, you know, impressive for what he was able to do. You know, in, in that setting, but like there's a lot of variables that went into that, and, and still things that we have to continue to, to get better at and focus on. But uh, for sure, an encouragement of, of what uh, is to come and uh, what we can can be as a as an offense and as a football team. Taylor, then Ken. Coach, uh, um, I guess Michigan State, the secondary seems to be a little bit vulnerable at times. Mm -hmm. Is that something where you'd like to see? Pass rusher is it more just kind of the youth in the secondary? Or well, I think there's, you know, it, it's it's never one thing, you know. We, I thought we got some good pressure, you know. We didn't get any sacks. We had several pressures. Um, you always want more pressure. Pressures, you know, creates, you know, what you want defensively for an offense, um, and uh, def, definitely caused some errant throws because of the pressure. Um, the, the young secondary has to continue to grow. Um, I, I know that. Uh, Taiwan played extremely well, you know, but we challenged some other guys even between the end of the game and, and this moment right now. Met with some guys already about them elevating their uh, their play, you know, at that position. We, we put those guys, you know, we put them on, on an island at times, and that's, that's part of what we do. And we know that, they know that, and that's what you embrace. And so um, felt like that, that lost some of those one-on-ones, and sometimes it just, it was just, one-on-one -on -one technique and winning those battles. And, and uh, you know, 25, their guys, number one receiver in the Big Ten right now for a reason. A uh, really good football player, you know, a very clutch player, has been that way for them and, and continues to be. So, you know, he came up with a big catch at the end, you know, that we needed to, you know, I thought our guy was in good position. He's got to find a way to get that ball out of there, you know. So, but uh, that's that's where you start. And I, that's why I said it's, it's one, one play. We're, we're at the point now where, you know, we're, 
in those, you know, we have some communication breakdowns in, in the secondary that we got to, sometimes it's you, sometimes it's reps, sometimes it's just, you know, um, but time has taught me that you just stay the course, you know, and, uh, uh, but uh, we had some, some things where some guys got cut loose and a lot of that's communication. It's been able to, they do some the cluster groupings and different things and that's what everybody does. I mean, that's kind of part of the game right now. And so just different ways of handling that and reacting to that and you know, we just got to get better. There's no doubt. I mean, but it's, it's, uh, you know, frustrating, you know, to not be able to get some of those at critical times, but at the same time, you have to, you know, it's a team game. You know, we, we dropped a pick six, you know, they just, you know, it's tough, you know, and you, and you drill and drill and drill. And, you know, we had, we got the fumble, it was a key fumble. We got, and we had the holding on that same play. That was a game changer, not a turn of events there, huge, you know. So, um, I just think that, uh, you know, leaving those guys, I just know that they're, they're, that's the one position. I mean, you're, you can screw up on the D-line and nobody ever knows usually. You make a mistake in the secondary and everybody you know, can figure that one out. You know? So that's part of playing that position and coaching that position. And, and uh, I think I might have said this, but my dad taught me this a long time ago when I, when I first became a young head coach. He said, you better make sure you have the best defensive back coach you can find and the best offensive line coach you can find because those are two areas that are the hardest for kids to play and they'll get you beat if you don't get them right. And uh, I believe it. You know, it's true. That was back, you know, years ago. I'm talking about at the high school level, but it really doesn't change. It's not. It's not any different. And so uh, we have got great coaches in those spots, and we got really good players. So um, excited for them to continue to grow and develop. Ken, then Cam. Do you have an update on Juan Harris's uh, status? And then just health-wise, how did you come out? Of you know, we came out of the game healthy, which is good. You know, it's a physical game against those guys, it always is. They play that style and uh, uh, got some bumps and bruises for sure, but uh, no, nobody that uh, from the game itself that I believe is going to cause any extended, uh, even if we were playing this week, everybody would be playing that played in the game. Uh, I expect Juan to be back, I do. I think uh, he was you know, doing a lot of extra work today again, so he's a guy we need in there. That provides a lot for us. And uh, so I expect him to be back and uh, um, I think uh, Reese Taylor, you know, we really missed him. I thought we really needed him in this game, and, and it's unfortunate, but he should be back uh, for Rutgers. And so if that it goes as planned. And so I uh, um, feel you know, pretty good about those, the guys that didn't play, that they should have a chance to come back this week. And like I said, that's our second goal on the list there is, is to get our guys healthy. So I know that uh, even Matt Bjornsson has, has been, uh, was, was able to do some things in the game, but was limited. And so we're trying to continue to get him healthy. So that we can go into this next stretch so as healthy as possible. Cam, then Matt. Uh, Tom, it seems that this year in the kick return game, you guys are taking a couple more shots than mm -hmm. compared to last year. How much of that is a product of what David Ellis can bring you guys? And also, when you're a team that maybe needs some of those X Factor type plays to change momentum, how do you even go about generating that beyond just breaking the tackle and making another block? You're right. And, I, and, I, and you, you're accurate in your assessment. You know, we have definitely. Um, I like the guys back there. You know, I think David Ellis is a special player, and I want to give him. And he's a he can be a game changer. And those, those returns are big. And we had discussions even during the game about our approach going in was to hey, we're going to bring these out because we felt like that he was worth the risk. You know, uh, yeah, you can fair catch it, get it at 25, and and I, I'm tempted to do that a lot because it's a it's 25 free yards with no no threat of a penalty, and then the penalty's really the, that's kind of the. You know what, what gets you? That really, really pins you down. And I mean, that's how we opened the second half. Now we end up overcoming that and getting the field goal out of it. But, but that was that was tough. So, I think that uh, I think he's worth the risk. And so we. And, and, but one of the goals for this week is to continue to improve both our score team, which is punt returns, and our house call, which is kickoff returns, our blocking. You know, and that's it. Those are tough blocks. And the way the rules are now, they're all just one-on-one -on -one blocks. They've taken out the double teams. It's one-on-one, -on -one, me versus you in space blocking you. That's why there's so many holding calls and blocks in the back at the NFL level, at our level, because there's so much movement. It's hard. It's hard to do that. So, but we're going to really, our, our entire work this week, our special teams is all going to be technique work and drills the whole week. And so that's one of our objectives. And so those are, those are game changing plays we have to create. You know, we did a great job with the one with WAP and then it got called back. You know, as, a, as we know, it was a 60 some yard exchange, a huge turn of events. And then, you know, he caught the, he caught the one too deep. You know, this is his first year catching punts. Really didn't do much in high school either, um, but uh, he's got to learn. You know, that's let that one hit, and yeah, it could bike it, it could bounce back. But I'll take our chances on that one. And he's got, he, and he'll, he'll learn from that. He's a smart football player. But you get in there, 
in that setting, the ball age just kind of lost where he was and, and uh, made a mistake. So, but uh, I just think we got some t get gifted returners on our team, and I want to give them a chance to <clears throat> go change, go create game changing plays. Matt and Ken, there was a, uh, a point again, I don't remember exactly when it was, but it looks like you kind of went after, uh, went after uh, Coach Womack a little bit on the sidelines. Kind of what was going on there? Do you see kind of your role at all? in the defense changing with trying to make some improvements off of it. Oh, I mean, I'm always involved in defense. So, I mean, if you saw that interaction, you just know who I am. I'm a pretty fiery guy, you know. So, and uh, I love King, and we're really close. And so, I'm going to rip his tail, and his tail needs to be ripped, you know. And, uh, but the bottom line is, it's right for half. You know, it was that, that whole thing there. I mean, we needed to get a stop, you know. And, hey, I, I, I'm okay with that, you know. And, and like I said, we – I'm not going to ever sit here and apologize for being fiery and intense and because uh, there's no sense of apologizing it's going to happen again, okay? So, but at the same time, that's my area, you know, and, and, and it, that's where I do feel for Kate because you don't really want to be the D.C. for the former D.C., right, when he's the head coach now. And that's a tough, it's a tough job. I mean, just tell what it is. I mean, because every little thing, and I'm hard on him in meetings and, and I'm hard on him during the game and, and uh, um, but it's like brothers, man. You just sometimes you just, but then you just hug each other and treat your family, right? And so that's how I feel about Kane. But you know, if something's not the way I want it to be done, or the yeah, outcome, okay, I'm never going to second guess. I'm telling you, I don't, I don't like second guessing calls because I don't think that's fair. Okay, but when we don't execute, you know, that's what I want to make sure, and, and, and we're making sure we put our guys in the best position. You know, so that's to me, it's it's just football. You know, it's, a, it's the passion of the moment. It's the fire of the moment. And I can even remember what I said, you know. So, but uh, the bottom line is, is yeah, I'm not going to ever, I'm not going to change. You know, I'm going to get probably a little more emotional than some people may think I should as a head coach. And I got to make sure I'm always level-headed and making good decisions. But uh, I just got to trust the good Lord to give me the wisdom to know, you know, when it's time, you know. And, and, and I'm just going to just react in some ways and, and just be that way. And, and that's just how I am. And so. But no, it's, and it could be somebody else too, but there's no doubt, you know, he's got a tough job. And he knows it, and that's what he signed up for, so it'll be good. We, we're, we're very close. Ken and Zach. I know you guys are on by, but looking forward, Rutgers makes a change in head coach, releases their offensive coordinator. How does that complicate things as you, as you prepare for Rutgers in a couple weeks? You usually have a couple weeks to, sure. to prepare for a team, and now you have that complication. Yeah, it definitely creates some, some unknowns, you know, and, uh, you know, Ben, coached against teams that had this happen in the past. And um, I don't know if I've seen it where the, the coordinator has, has been re replaced um, in these situations. Usually it's just a head coach. But um, so I guess the one positive thing is we don't play them this week. So we'll have a week to see what they decide to do in that regard and who's going to be calling the plays. And, and uh, But yeah, I mean, it's just, uh, you know, something we'll just have to react to. You know? But it will definitely create some unknowns, definitely create some change. and. Uh, yeah, it's next conference opponent, so they will they will get our full attention and we'll be absolutely ready. But we'll have to do some extra work to figure out what they may do now, even though you have you know, several games to look at. You're going to have to look at it with a different lens now with a new interim head coach and a new person calling the place. Zach? Um, kind of a two-part. One is, is sort of an injury. I think Ashawn is another guy that's kind of been in and out these first weeks. Kind of where's he at? I don't, I don't think he played. He did not. Weekend. And then... As you think about the bye week as it pertains to health or, or preparing for other teams, I don't know if it's a little cliche, but how helpful, can you almost break the season up into like three mini seasons in a way mm -hmm. because of the where the bye's fall, you play five, yeah. then four, four then and three. three. We totally did, and I, you know, like you said, um, I've been asked about it a couple times, and I have no control over when the buys are placed and when they come. So, but when I saw the schedule, uh, I liked what I saw. I felt like it broke down. Uh, from a numerical standpoint, uh, in a good way, and sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. I haven't had two before since I've been here, so you know, having the five that we've already played, and then having the four, and then another by, and then the three. I mean, it gives you a chance to to definitely um, be able to segment your season. You always kind of, you know, put it in thirds. I think in a lot of ways, at least I, I have in the past, and and how you say, okay, we want to be able to accomplish this, this, and this along the way. So, but from a physical break and a mental break. Um, that's where the buys really become huge, you know, and, and so, you know, once again, you don't control it, so you don't 
get too bent out of shape if it's not the way you want it. But when it does go your way um, and, and what you feel is positive, then you take advantage of it. You know? So for me, it's really about maximizing this time, you know, to be able to, to get our, our team refreshed and to be able to have a great plan for the, the game that follows uh, the bye week and make sure you're sharp and make sure you're playing your very, very best football. Uh, which is what you have to do in, in conference play now. So, but yeah, I've been, uh, you know, definitely segmented it and talked about it with our team. In fact, we talked about it with our team going into the Michigan State week and what was ahead and how I broke it down and, and just trying to help our guys. I always try to do a good job of making sure they know the vision for what, what's, what we're trying to accomplish next. And so uh, we just got to take full advantage of it as a staff, and, and recruiting is a big part of it. We've got to, you know, it gives you an extra whole week of uh, – of days, you know, you're usually going to get two days. You get 42 days of evaluation during the season to use, and so we're going to be able to maximize all those best ability. And then, sorry, Ashawn. Just yeah, Ashawn, he's still out. Um, don't think he'll be back this week. So we'll see what the future holds for him. And his uh, he's definitely battled some injuries this year. It's been hard for him, and he's given so much to our program. So, but uh, just wanting to get get healthy so he can get back and help us.